The bad news arrives in a thin white envelope, a two-page letter bearing no signature from the U.S. Social Security Administration. Since January, 900,000 notices have been mailed to elderly and disabled legal immigrants across the nation, informing them that they are likely to lose their supplemental security income and food stamps. Welfare reform has come in the mail, and for many, the letters bring an end to hope. Maria Maurizio got the news last month. She came to America from Portugal 15 years ago after her husband passed away. A legal immigrant, she worked here as a seamstress, paid her taxes, and slowly established her new life. But in 1987, she lost her health along with her ability to work. Now, at age 68, she stands to lose the $595 a month disability check she has come to depend on. This is a tragedy. I light a candle and pray that this will be over soon. I'm very worried about how I'm going to pay my rent and my other bills. I'm very confused. I think I'm going to be sent back. Where will I go? Back in August, it seemed like an irresistible piece of the welfare reform package. Cuts in food stamps and disability benefits alone to foreign immigrants would result in nearly half the $54 billion we were supposed to save under the new welfare plan. Good politics in a time of rising anti-immigration sentiment. But an odd thing happened. It turns out that many of these statistics have faces, and the faces belong to immigrants who have been here legally, many of them for years, paying taxes. They had come to be with their families and to pursue the American dream. For the most part, they did not seek help from the government until age or disability left them unable to fend for themselves. Now, the rules have changed. And the new rules are, if they don't become U.S. citizens, their SSI disability checks will stop in August. Some who are illiterate, senile, or dying know they cannot possibly learn English or become a citizen at this point. They also know that soon, they will have no money. I don't know what to do. I can't think about this. I can't go to work at my age. It is terrible. Leia Berstetska is 91 years old and has outlived her husband and her two children. She came to America nine years ago from Russia with her son, a scientist. Anti-Semitism drove them from their homeland. They were glad to be in the land of the free. But when Leia's son died four years ago, she was left on her own. Now she spends her days trying to learn English and worrying what she will do if her $600 a month SSI check is cut. I received a letter that if I won't be a citizen by May 19th, I won't receive my benefits. I am very upset, but I understand that I have to study English to take the citizenship test. I study the history of the United States. I study questions about the government. It is very hard for me. I worry I won't know the answers. The new welfare rules have ignited near panic in the immigrant community. 500,000 elderly and disabled are expected to lose their income nationwide, sending many from subsistence level survival to worse. Citizenship classes are packed as thousands try to memorize the U.S. Constitution in hopes of passing the naturalization exam. But many immigrants don't speak English. Some of the elderly barely remember their address, never mind how often a senator can run for office. Who nominates judges to the Supreme Court? At the Jewish Community Housing for the Elderly in Brighton, residents set aside canes and walkers to grapple with questions that may stand between them and citizenship. How many senators are there? Who was president during the Civil War? What is the Bill of Rights? I don't think this is what the American public had in mind when they thought about welfare reform. The rhetoric that fueled the welfare reform debate was really about putting able-bodied people back to work. But the real victims of welfare reform are legal immigrants who are elderly and disabled, precisely those people who are not able-bodied people able to go to work. This is going to be a, a tremendous 
and terrible human tragedy when people are suddenly confronted with the fact that they have nothing. The United States. I realize I have to do something. I study, I try my best. I read something, but in 30 or 40 minutes, I forget everything. My memory is not as good as it used to be. What else can I do? I am absolutely alone here, and I have to support myself. They come to the local immigrant assistance center in New Bedford with letters in hand, looking for translation, looking for answers, looking for hope. They are told that there are a few exemptions to the new welfare rules. If they have worked in America for 10 years, or if they are a veteran, or a refugee who came within the last five years, they may still be eligible for SSI. But most do not qualify. You can see fear in their eyes. Juliet Aruda is the seniors coordinator at the center. I've had many people who have actually just cried and said to me, where am I going to live? Am I going to go underneath the bridge? What's going to happen to them? They don't have any plans. It's not like, okay, when I lose this check, I can go back to my relatives in my old country, or I know that my children are going to be able to support me for the rest of my life. It's a tremendous fear of what is going to hap happen to them after they lose their income. Maria Almas came to the center to find out what she must do to survive. She came to America legally in 1980, after her mother died and she had no one left in Portugal. She found work as a stitcher in textile mills, paid her taxes, but never formally applied for citizenship. After seven years on the job, doctors told her she could no longer work. Now 67, with two open-heart surgeries behind her, she stands to lose her only source of income. I came over to the United States because I like the way people lived here. I came over to work and to be able to support myself. I have always worked. I didn't want to live off of charity. I didn't think it was necessary to become a citizen in this time I was here. Maria's monthly SSI check is $550, half of which goes to pay her rent. If her income is cut, she worries how she will pay for the heart medication which keeps her alive. I don't think the law is fair, especially for someone who is sick. If I wasn't sick, I would be working. I don't know what is going to happen to me. People tell me not to worry, but I can't help it. I worry a lot. Nationwide, fewer than 5% of immigrants rely on cash assistance from the government. That's less than the percentage of native-born Americans who do. But perception belies fact. Many believe that a growing tide of immigrants are overtaxing the system. Supporters of the immigrant provisions of welfare reform say the old system promoted fraud and encouraged foreigners to come to America in search of handouts. Dan Stein is director of the Federation for American Immigration Reform. It's very important to understand that as immigrants come today, they are increasingly low skilled and less educated. We will not have an immigration system that simply allows us to import poverty and welfare. Congress is trying to protect the American taxpayer, go back to a system whereby immigrants, until they become citizens, don't get welfare. It's based on a fundamental principle. If you're going to come as an immigrant, you've got to pull your own weight. Pull your own weight and pay your own way and not draw benefits until you become a citizen. For the most part, congressional Republicans oppose any change in the new welfare reform bill, claiming the old law was a magnet for needy foreigners. But in some quarters, there is talk of national betrayal. When you look at the, the budget savings in the current welfare reform bill, it's absolutely stunning to realize that 44% of the savings in welfare reform were savings directly f on programs for illegal immigrants. And that becomes even more significant when you realize that only 5% of legal immigrants receive public benefits. So part of what drove this were pure budget savings. Immigrants, because they don't vote, were an easy target. There is talk of modifying the new law to soften the blow, but so far it's only talk. 
In Massachusetts, with the seventh largest immigrant community in the nation, Governor Weld has called for state aid for immigrants who lose SSI, although at a level far short of the current federal payment. Few immigrants are waiting to see how the political posturing plays out. Most have applied for citizenship, but the process can take a year or more. SSI checks will stop coming in 100 days. Time is not on their side. A virtual United Nations of elderly and disabled legal immigrants are slated to lose their income. There are Cambodians who escaped the killing fields of the Khmer Rouge, lathe operators from Minsk, garment workers from Santo Domingo. Chu Se and his wife Pei Zhen Men fled China after the Cultural Revolution branded them enemies of the state and destroyed their lives. They came here 13 years ago hoping to build a better life. When I first came here, I was really happy because I had run a large manufacturing plant in China and I knew how to make sophisticated machinery. I could apply my knowledge and build my life here, but I found that there was no way I could find work with companies here because I did not speak English. I ended up taking a job as a dishwasher to support ourselves. Chu studied English each morning before putting in a full day in the kitchens of Chinatown. His dreams were cut short when he was trapped in a fire, damaging his lungs and cutting off his ability to work. Since her arrival in America, Pei Zhen Men lost her eyesight to glaucoma. In August, they are likely to lose the disability check. We worry about our livelihood. How will we live without the assistance? But without being a citizen, what can you do? There is not much you can do. But I really wonder why they changed the law so abruptly. It seems like it was so unreasonable. To say how I feel is very complicated. I don't know how to express it. Zenobia Lai is an attorney and an immigrant herself. She is trying to help the Says and hundreds of others like them. There's absolutely nothing I can do for them. The law is written as it is, and the time is so short that I cannot do anything for them. I can only tell them this is what's going to happen and have a good life, basically. What are you supposed to do? You don't know English. You're not going to naturalize tomorrow. And it's going to happen. Even if you start learning English now, it's going to take you years before you can communicate you know, intelligently in English. There are no shortage of stories of people about to lose the little they have. David Ellentuck fought the Nazis and nearly died for his country, but a chest full of medals did not buy an easier life as a Jew in the Soviet Union. Eight years ago, America welcomed him as a refugee. Though he is now blind and disabled, he no longer qualifies for aid under the new rules. One thing is often overlooked in the entire debate about immigration, and that is that this is a nation of immigrants. Many of our grandparents came to America from places like Galway and Palermo and Minsk. Today, newer immigrants are more likely to arrive from places like Santo Domingo or Phnom Penh. But times change, and so do sentiments. So now, instead of hearing, give us your tired, you're poor, you're hungry. Our latter-day immigrants are more likely to hear, sorry, we are flat out of compassion. I think that we are going to see unfolding in our communities an, an incredible tragedy come August because we are going to see the haunting specter of tens of thousands of elderly, and disabled people who have no source of cash income, who have no source of food and nutrition, who have been left virtually abandoned. I am absolutely convinced that the American public, if it really understood that we were talking about denying people of their only means of cash income, of their very life, would not support that.